Check, 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 check. Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. Strength, courage. Go. Two gadget eight. Three, two, one. Strength, courage, determination, knowledge, and the ability to work together as one. These are all values and traits of America's native people. From the top. Three, two, one. Strength, courage, determination, knowledge, and the ability to work together as one. These are all values and traits of America's native people, from days long gone but never forgotten to present day life. Our people remain true to our culture, true to our heritage, taking from the land and see what we need to survive, while respecting God's creation and making sure that these resources remain abundant and cared for so that future generations may continue the traditions of our native ways. Through the centuries, our native people have preserved food. <laughs> take two. Through the centuries, our n take three, three, two, one. Through the centuries, our native people have persevered, overcoming nature's wrath, providing food and shelter for our families, coexisting with others, economic struggle, and now today our people face a new three two one, and now today our people face a new dilemma, one that threatens a way of life that we have earned over the years, one that threatens our very existence. Ooh. But be three two one. But before I share this with you, first let me tell you about our past. It is a past that we are proud to say we have survived. It is a past that will forever remain our legacy. There was once a time when this great land belonged to us. Our people shared the bounties of the land. We took care of each other. We made sure no one went without. We traded, f we traded goods amongst our tribes, helped each other to hunt and gather food, we were living examples of a peaceful people. But our life would soon change. Three, two, one. But our life would soon change as explorers crossed the great seas searching for uncharted territory. They laid clam clams. They laid claim to our lands, calling them discoveries and calling us savages. We welcomed them with open arms and our savage hospitality only to become martyrs and slaves to their savage ways. And so began the struggle to maintain our way of life, to preserve our traditions and our culture. In 1804, the Clinkett natives of Alaska would be forced from their lands by Russian settlers, many dying at the hands of these overseas intruders. In the late 1800s, Native Americans were pushed onto reservations and they were forced to make treaties with in the late 1800s Native Americans were pushed onto reservations and they were forced to make treaties with the US government dang it in the late 1800s Native Americans were pushed onto reservations and they were forced to make treaties which the US government violated again and again in 1838, thousands of Native Americans from the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, take that second part again. In 1838, thousands of Natives. In 1838, thousands of Native Americans from the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole tribes were forced to leave their homelands on the 800 plus mile march to Indian Territory, known as the Trail of Tears. 
thousands of Native Americans died on the trail. <coughs> to thousands of Native Americans died on the trail due to disease, exposure, and starvation. This mentality of the Western culture to dominate and rule would continue over the following decades, and today only a handful of reservations exist where major tribes once flourished. With the discovery of oil in Alaska came the politics and greed of the Western culture, laying claim to thousands of acres of native lands. It was this point in time that we Alaska natives would put our foot down and say, enough is enough. This is our land. From all corners of the state, <coughs> take two, from all corners of the state, our native people joined together and formed the Alaska Federation of Natives to protect our land and subsistence rights against the federal government who wanted only one thing, the oil beneath our resource-rich lands. We stood strong and held fast until an we stood strong and held fast until an agreement could be reached. As a result of the passing of ANCSA, thirteen native corporations were formed throughout Alaskans. Take two. As a result of the passing of ANCSA, thirteen native corporations were formed throughout Alaska. Corporations that today have become a huge force behind the economies of most rural communities, providing shareholders with job opportunities, dividends, scholarships, and other opportunities that may not have otherwise been attainable. Okay. The small business. Take two. The Small Business Administration's 8A program was created in 1974 to help minority and other small disadvantaged businesses to grow through a program of federal contracting preferences and set-asides. Through the 8A program, eligible firms can be awarded government contracts on a sole source, non-competitive basis. Alaska Native Corporations, ANCs, are eligible to compete for these sole source contracts. Competitive bidding on limited opportunities allows 8A contractors to gain valuable experience in various market arenas and has made Alaska Native Corporations major players in the workforce market. Under the SBA's 8A program, small businesses are able to compete for sole source contracts up to $3 million. Native-owned native 8A firms and ANCs have a unique status in that they are not subject to the $3 million limitations on sole source contracts applicable to other 8A firms, allowing A and Cs to compete for larger contracts. The argument arises that A and C should not have privileges over small businesses and that all small businesses should be able to compete for the same unlimited sole source contracts. But as Dennis Matrokin, CEO of Cognac Incorporated, explains, Circumstances are quite different when comparing ANCs to small businesses. In the past, allegations have been made that some corporations were using 8A contracting to make a handful of shareholders rich, and that corporations were abusing privileges originally meant to benefit small businesses. Since participating in 8A contracting, Alaska Native corporations have seen shareholder unemployment rates decline and a growing number of shareholders pursuing higher educations. For many shareholders who choose to go to college or technical school, take two. For many shareholders who choose to go to college or technical school, the benefits of scholarship programs made possible through 8A contracting are priceless since, mo since most rural communities rely heavily on subsistence economy. But what about those shareholders who choose to stay in their village and continue take two? But what about those shareholders who choose to stay in their village and continue a subsistence lifestyle? How does 8A contracting benefit these individuals?
When you talk to Alaska Native people throughout the state of Alaska about their ANCSA corporations and ADA contracting, you will hear positive feedback about how life has improved throughout most of Alaska's rural communities. We have seen our unemployment we have seen our unemployment rates decrease, our quality of life Im take that again, three, two, one. We have seen our unemployment rates decrease, our quality of life improve, and a huge increase in the number of and a huge increase in the numbers of young people pursuing a higher education. And even with all these positive things taking place today, there are those who stand opposed to the unique status of Alaska Native corporations when it comes to when it comes to government contracting all of this fuss has brought national attention to ANC's and has begun an investigation that is looking into the legitimacy of ANC's involvement within the 8A program wrap So I'm going to start up my pre-flight inspection. And I check my fuel I check the baggage door. I usually check this uh, fusel fuselage right here. Uh -huh. I check the uh, stability of this. See if it's nice and stiff. And right here is a lead weight. That's what I check for. Make sure it's not going to come off. Check these uh, bolts right here. I know I have to check for the, stiff the st stiffness of the flap. Make sure these cotter pins are in. See if the lights are working. So dents, no nothing on here. I'll check for the disc. They make sure these uh, screws right here are not loose. It's a shimmy dampener. Check for any dings here. Belt's nice and tight. They make sure there's no loose bolts, no nothing. Well, looks like the plane's ready to fly, and here I go. And finally, with everything in working order, Tristan Carl and instructor Jim Strickland are skyward bound taking flight to perform repeated landing drills called touch and goes. Right after we did a pre-flight, we did a, a engine run up to make sure the engine's running nice and smooth, make sure it's, make sure there's no problem. And now next thing, uh, we had to listen to the ADIS information uh, to see uh, what, if, what information we have, which way the wind's coming from, and uh, what, what is our visibility. And now that I had to request the tower for uh, for to go to uh, to do to go to Delta and also do a short approach long landing. My while we were up there, it was a pretty good crosswind. Uh, I was kind of a little scared, but uh, uh, but I'm so glad I got over it. So we did a few crosswinds while before we were landing. I knew we had to curb in curb into the wind first. And um, and before it touched down, we had to straighten the plane out to the runway, put wings down towards the, uh, the wind, and do a one, one wheel landing. And you see, they were they were kind of little. It was a little bumpy up there. So we we did at least three touch and goes. So uh, I'm telling you, it's pretty rough, and it takes a lot of practice to do uh, crosswind landings. Well, this is one of the very powerful things about Capstone. We have here a display of Southwest Alaska. Will Johnson's advocacy of flight safety isn't limited to his involvement with the school. This evening, he attends a meeting to discuss the implementation of the latest in aviation technology, a revolutionary safety program being developed right here in Bethel called Capstone. This has been an enormously successful program that started in Alaska. I believe that we will see this system become worldwide, a worldwide standard. It uses uh, ADSB, Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. It's a way of airplanes communicating with each other electronically and ground stations electronically to receive weather information, collision avoidance information with other airplanes. Uh, the weather information can be graphical or uh, textual, written out. We also have terrain avoidance information 
the, a moving map that shows where the train is, and of course we have uh, other selections, moving maps that show uh, the uh, general area, the navigational aids, the airports. So it's a very, very powerful piece of technology that's installed in the cockpit of airplanes here in the Bethel region. We hope soon to expand across Alaska and eventually across the United States and around the world. It gives the pilot tremendous situational awareness. It allows for flight following so that if an accident does occur, then we know right where that airplane went down, where it disappeared. This has already resulted in a number of saves where we've taken the search out of search and rescue. Our searches are gone. We simply go rescue people. The beautiful thing about this is there's been a dramatic reduction in the accident rate. I've heard figures as high as 47%. That means that we've cut the accident rate almost in half. This is truly remarkable, an amazing payback. What this does is allow the dispatchers for the airlines to view the airplanes and determine when the planes will land, where they're located, if there happens to be an accident, we know where they last were. And one of the nice things that comes from all this is customer service. I heard the story last night where an uh, agent in the village was able to tell when his plane was landing so the fresh fruits and vegetables didn't have to stay out on the runway too long. He could actually tell by looking at his monitor when the plane was going to land. Garris Kingiak and Will Johnson explain the program and how to enroll. I personally fly around to a lot of the high schools around around our area. I've been up to Nome. Uh, I've been uh, almost everywhere on the Delta here trying to recruit students for our flight school. Um, and uh, and I've, I still have a few more places to go, but our flight school is a government-funded flight school, so we're not a profit-driven flight school. You know, you're more likely to get a good, quick ed education out here. Of course, it's all dependent on the weather. The school kind of shut down for a little while and then started back up. But uh, I think it's here, here for good now. It just depends on whether or not we get a, a large amount of students here or not. We accept pilots from all over the state. Uh, there's many, many funding options and scholarships available for pilots. A lot of ways to get your ratings here. We have a full-time operation. We're here seven days a week into the evenings. That way we can take advantage of people's free time to train and the good weather that uh, sometimes occurs on the weekend after uh, having bad weather during the week. We also have uh, flight simulators, including one elite simulator with an instructor station, terrific for training uh, for the instrument rating. We also have a written test center here. We have a local examiner here for medical exams, so you don't have to go to Anchorage anymore for your exam, although you can certainly do so. And we have uh, a flight test examiner scheduled to come online sometime this summer. Uh, we presently have examiners from FAA who help us out with getting our check rides for our uh, pilot applicants. The path that a person would take to come to this school would be to apply to the school. We would do a background check, make sure that the uh, student has a good uh, background. Uh, we want to avoid anyone with uh, felonies or drug and alcohol problems. Those things don't mix with being a pilot. Uh, we like to see people who have good command of the English language, since English is the international language of aviation, and also good mathematics skills are very important. After those students are accepted, then they can go to work uh, locating funding, and once they locate funding, they should get their medical exam, just to make sure that there's no medical reason that they can't fly. The FAA is primarily interested that a person has good sight, good hearing, and nothing that would incapacitate them during flight. There's a lot to understand in aviation when you're flying. It's not like you're just going to go out there and fly. 
you have to know your emergency procedures, which is carburetor, gas, under undercarriage, mixture, primer, and seat belts. Check. You, know, you have to check them all. When you're flying a plane, there's much more to worry about with the weather, the uh, fueling, the uh, preparation for the flight. Like, you have to be physically fit for the flight. You have to have all these kinds of attitudes towards flying, like situational awareness. Uh, you can't have macho, you can't be impulsive, you can't be invulnerable, and um, you can't uh, you can't have resi resignation or you can't want to like resign when you're out flying. Like you have to be there at all times. It's your life when you're flying. Yep, well, ever since I was uh, 11th grade, I wanted to become a pilot because I was looking at a bunch of things on a list and I didn't feel like I was interested in anything else but flying. Traffic in sight, clear for takeoff. Cessna 76 November. I'd rather have a life where I can uh, do some work that I don't really know too much about, you know, get new experiences. And part of being a pilot is working all over the world and getting to see interesting and exciting places. Pretty much encourage younger guys, younger ladies, for the next generation to get their uh, private pilot's license so they can take out their younger brothers and sisters or parents out to uh, their hometowns in the rural area and uh, wherever they want to go. When you're young and when you're still learning at a good speed, it's about the best time to keep on moving, but you're never too old to become a pilot. I know a guy who was 60 years old, got his private license here at our flight school, and uh, now he wants to work on his instrument rating. When you're out flying, it's just so much fun if you know how to do it. It's kind of like a bird and it's flying up in the air and then, you know, it's like an eagle that wants to quit for a while, comes down and grabs a, grabs a salmon and then takes off again. And it's just so much fun if you know how to do it. Thank you everyone for joining us for another Heartbeat Alaska. And once again, welcome to our new viewers in the state of Washington. Heartbeat Alaska now is aired from one coast to the other, from Washington all the way across to our good friends in the Seminole Tribe. Hello, my good friends in the Seminole Nation. We're aired on five reservations in Florida. God bless every single one of you. And thank you so much for joining us once again for Heartbeat Alaska. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Welcome one, welcome all. He has been in Haiti, I've been in Haiti, uh, and we was headed for Arizona, and our friends, which you'll probably be interviewing a little later, said that they were going to Texas because but there was a missions work going on in Texas. Do we want to go with them? We said, sure, we can always go to Arizona from Texas. Well, it's Texas as far as we got. We've been there now three terms, uh, three uh, winters. We've been in Mexico doing missions work. So God has been working with us for quite a while. I think that this is an opportunity for you to have, this is not a camera, <laughs> Please do not get any profiles of me. Um, this is your opportunity to minister to many, 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 many. Because I'm going to get out of the way and let you hear this. And um, what is that sound? It's okay. That's okay. And if it comes here, we'll forward it on. But now your audience are those people. We okay. get calls from the inner city of New York to... The reservations. Thank you. No, no. That's what you're going to oh, say. Oh, you want us yes. to say that? Welcome to We Win, mm -hmm. and then okay. you, your names, and then just uh, say you're you're from all the way up here, and and then you have a message for whomever. Okay. And <coughs> don't worry about being perfect. Because
Because we'll fix it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I like fixing it. I like fixing it. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to We Win Ministries. We're Jack and Sally Burden. We're missionaries in Mexico. And we came up from Brownsville, Texas to uh, Anchorage, Alaska to see the beautiful state of Alaska. And it is definitely beautiful. It's a beautiful creation that God has given the Alaskan people and the Eskimos and all the Indians in this area and they should be so proud of their country. You know, uh, Jesus died on the cross and he forgave our sins and he forgave them then. So we don't have to be walking around under the load of sin because Jesus has done taking care of that job. He forgave us at the cross. So all we have to do is accept what he's given us and enjoy the life because he said he would give us a life more abundantly. And if he gives us a life more abundant, it's better than what we have. So there's no need to be going around under the condemnation of past life and all of the things that we've done in our lives that we don't, are not happy about or not proud of. When we come to Jesus, we accept that new life. Amen. Our sins were forgiven at the cross. He made it possible that we could accept him. When Satan deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden, he brought the curse of sin on the world. When Jesus died on the cross, he re removed that curse of sin. Thank now you. Satan and Jesus are not alike at all. Satan made the whole world go under the curse of sin. Jesus broke that curse and gave the whole world the opportunity if they wanted it, their choice, to accept him and be out under that curse of sin because he broke it at the cross. He destroyed the curse of sin and death. He forgave all of our sins at the cross. He said he would not impute our sins. Now, if we die in our sins, naturally, we're going to go to hell where Satan has provided a, a, God has provided a place for Satan and all of his followers to go. But if we accept Jesus, we don't have to live under the condemnation of sin and death. We don't have to live in the uh, remembrance of all the things that we've done bad. So we have to clean up our minds and, you know, our biggest fight with Satan is not warring him in the heavenlies and, and beating down the strongholds and all of those uh, things that they tell us that uh, we've got to do. Our biggest war is in our own minds. Because if you read that scripture, he goes on to say, and, turn, and pulling down every imagination. And that's where imaginations are in our mind. Mm -hmm. That brought itself above the kingdom of God. So... When you find your mind wandering back in some old times that you were back out doing some things that you really shouldn't have been doing, just start speaking the name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, bring, just bring down that thought and, and, and destroy it because there's no sense in living in those days that where you was in, in sin and lived under the curse. Just come to Jesus, accept Him, accept that new life, rejoice in Him, and enjoy the love and, and that God has put out here for his people and I'm gonna let my wife speak now well I just want to say to the people you have a wonderful ministry right here in your midst uh, I I'm sure they their prayer line has helped many and I don't know what your needs are uh, but I know we all have needs I don't know where you've come from in life but I know there's an answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And there are people here to lead you to Jesus Christ Jesus. and to help you and to teach you and to show you uh, where to go to receive further help. So I encourage you, first of all, to call the people here at We Win and tell them your needs and, and let them help you. And then I want to try to help you with a word of encouragement. That, okay.